right, so that's page 118 when we are done. So we're going to look at double angle and half angle identities, which I put them on here, but you also, you really need to be looking for them on, I feel like I should just take them off because I really want you looking at them on there because that's what you're going to be referring to. So make sure you know where they are and all that kind of stuff. We've already used one of them because of a problem that I put on another thing because you should be able to substitute, but we're going to look at these a little bit different as well. So let's, we're going to start with number two. Okay, so it says if sine theta is ne negative one third and theta is between pi and three pi halves, we want to find tangent of two theta. So if theta is between pi and three pi halves, what quadrant are we in? Third. Okay, so I need to draw myself a triangle in the third quadrant. Yes, we're just going to skip number one. All right, that is the second quadrant. Yes, it is. Thank you. <laughs> I said third, I drew it in the second. So yes, let's really be in the third quadrant now. That would make more sense. Okay. All right, so sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So this is one, this is three. And then it's since it's in the third quadrant, this has to be negative, right? And so then to find the other side of the triangle, I'm just going to do Pythagorean theorem, but we're not going to take the time to do that. I'm just going to tell you, you get two square root of two because you should be able to handle that. But what should be true about this number? It needs to be negative, right? Because when you take the square root, you plus or minus, and what quadrant you're in determines whether it's plus or minus, right? All right, so I need, to, what I want to do is find tangent of two theta. So if I look up here to find tangent of two theta, I need to know what tangent of theta is, right? So from this, I can tell that tangent of theta, just regular old theta, is opposite over hypotenuse, I'm sorry, it's opposite over adjacent, I pointed to the right thing, said the wrong thing again, negative 1 over negative 2 square root of 2. Okay. So those negatives cancel out, and then that gives me 1 over 2 square root of 2. When I rationalize that, what do I get? Square root of 2 over 4, right? Square root of 2 over 4, yes. All right. So now, when I look at that tangent of 2 theta little formula, I'm going to substitute in. So this is going to be tangent of 2 theta equals, well, that's 2 times the tangent of theta, which is the square root of 2 over 4, over 1 minus tangent theta, which is square root of 2 over 4 squared. Okay, we all good so far? on here. It's on your notes and it's on here. All right, so, no, thanks. Then this equals, so the numerator will now be square root of 2 over 2 over 1 minus, well, the square root of 2 over 4 squared is going to give me 2 over 16, which I'd rather think of as 1 over 8. Okay, so to simplify my denominator, that's going to give me the square root of 2 over 2 over, what's 1 minus 1 8? 7 8. Then I need to multiply by the reciprocal. So this is going to give me square root of 2 over 2 times 8 over 7. And then that's 1, that's 4. So I get that tangent of 2 theta equals 4 square root of 2 over 7. And I'm in the third quadrant. Tangent of 2 theta is not necessarily in the third quadrant, right? But if you keep your signs like they're supposed to be all the way through, then you get, if it's supposed to be positive, it's positive. If it's supposed to be negative, it's negative. It takes care of itself. Okay? What questions do you have? We good? Easy enough? All right, let's look at number three. So tangent theta and theta is between pi halves and pi. So what quadrant is that in? Second. That one's actually in the second quadrant. So here's my second quadrant triangle. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So this is the square root of 7. This is 5. And then it's going to be negative 5, right? Then when you do Pythagorean theorem, you're going to get 4 square root of 2 for the hypotenuse. 
Okay, so now I'm going to need to find cosine of 2 theta. So when I look at that, I have three choices, right? And I can pick any of them. It doesn't matter at all, but um, two of them will keep me from squaring more than I need to, right? So like if it were me, I probably wouldn't pick the first choice just because there's two squareds in there. But then of choices two and three, do you want to do the sine squared or the cosine squared? Sine squared? Okay, so we'll do that one. So let me write, I'm going to actually write this one down so that we're all on the same page here. 2 theta equals, y'all said sine squared, 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. Okay, because again, it doesn't matter, but that's what we picked, so that's what we're going to use. All right, so in order to do this, I need to know what the sine of theta is. So I can find that out over here, right? Sine theta equals sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So that's the square root of 7 over 4 square root of 2. And I don't need to rationalize right now. I chose to go ahead and rationalize here in number 2 because I knew that I, when I was putting, I would have to put in just a regular old tangent. But for this one, I'm actually squaring it. So the square roots will take care of themselves. There's no need for me to rationalize. You can. It's not wrong. It's just not necessary, and sometimes it makes things look a little bit more complicated. So we're just going to go with it as it is right here. So this equals 1 minus 2 times the square root of 7. Oh, that's a 4. My goodness. Let me actually write what I'm saying. Square root of 7 over... 4 squared of 2 squared. Okay, so when I square that fraction, the numerator is 7. What's the denominator? 32. Okay. Then 1 minus, what's 2 times 7 over 32? 7 over 16. And then what's 1 minus 7 over 16? 9 over 16. And that is the cosine of 2 theta. Okay. What questions do we have? So that's like using the identities, not really simplifying and manipulating them, just kind of using them to get values and whatnot. All right, so let's look at these half angle identities. So for half angles, you have three choices for tangent and just one each for sine and cosine. So here we have the cosine of 3 pi eighths, which is what we want to find. That's not a value that you know, okay? So I want to be able to figure out what that is. Um, what quadrant is 3 pi eighths in? The first, it has to be in the first. So that's an important thing for you to note before you start because we're actually gonna have to use a different angle to figure all this stuff out. So I don't know what 3 pi eighths is, but if I double that, I do know what 3 pi fourths is, right? Like we could do that one. So I'm going to write out that if I make, oh, goodness gracious. If I make pi over, oh, pi, oh my gosh. I don't know why my, my brain is misfiring today. Theta over 2, so the half angle. If I say the half angle is 3 pi over 8, then that means that theta equals 3 pi over 4. Does that make sense? So like that is my half angle. So that I'm looking for the half angle. I can figure out what um, what theta actually is. So that means that the cosine of theta, what is the cosine of 3 pi fourths? Negative square root of 2 over 2. Okay, so that's the cosine of theta, not the cosine of theta over 2. Okay, your time's up, hon. All right. So cosine, so I want the cosine of the half angle, which is this one right here. So I need the cosine of the angle. I got that. So now I'm going to substitute that in. I'm going to say that the cosine of theta over 2, and remember theta over 2 is 3 pi 8, so that's what I'm looking for. That's equal to plus or minus big old square root. In the numerator, I get 1 plus cosine, which is negative square root of 2 over 2, all over Two. And you got to make sure your square root actually shows that the whole thing is underneath it. You can't get sloppy with that. So it's plus or minus, but what is it? Plus or minus? Plus, because we decided we knew it was in quadrant one. That's why that's important. So now I can just drop the signs and I'm fine. So then this is square root of, now in the numerator, I need to get a common denominator. So my denominator is two. In the numerator, my common denominator will be two. 
The second term is going to be a negative square root of 2. What's the first term? 2. So now I've got a fraction and a fraction, and I've got to take care of this. This is the part where so many of you are making like the weirdest mistakes. And these mis most of the mistakes that y'all are making on, the, on these proofs and simplifying has absolutely nothing to do with trig and nothing to do with pre-calc. It is all algebra, you making up algebra steps and not knowing fraction rules. It literally has nothing to do with trig. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So here, when you're supposed to d multiply by the reciprocal, like if this was sine, then y'all multiply by like sine over one. That's not the reciprocal. This is like two over one. Maybe you need to actually make it into a fraction itself so that we get two minus the square root of two over two times. Then you have to actually flip it. That's what the reciprocal means. One over two. So then that is going to give me the square root of 2 minus the square root of 2 over 4. And remember that if I have the square root of a over b, that's the same thing as the square root of a over the square root of b. So I can take the square root of the denominator just fine, right? Square root of 4 is 2. So now I just have a square root in the numerator, and it's 2 minus the square root of 2 all over 2 that is the cosine of 3 pi eighths. You can simplify a square root within a square root, but we are definitely not getting into that today. That is for another lifetime. We're just going to leave it. It's not really illegal. It's not illegal like having them in the denominator, so it's fine. We all good? All right, a little bit over. We are going to do number six. All right, so on number six, they give us sine of theta. They tell us where theta is, and now we're looking for the half angle of this. So what quadrant are we in? Three. Okay, so I'm in the third quadrant. So this is where my triangle is. And so this is opposite over hypotenuse, and this has to be the negative one. Anybody know what the other side is without doing any work? It's 15. It's a Pythagorean triple. But again, if you don't know them, you should be able to just run through Pythagorean theorem quickly, and that's fine. Um, and this has to be negative because we're in quadrant three. Okay. So here's the thing. Some of these, when you work them out, the signs kind of take care of themselves. But then some of them, you have to know what quadrant you're going to end up in because we're taking the square roots. Didn't It didn't matter for the... Um, for the double angle, but it does matter for the half angle because so many of them have square roots in, in the work, okay? So I know what quadrant theta is in, but if I divide theta in half, I'm not going to be in the same quadrant. Does that make sense? So we need to figure out what quadrant the half angle is in. So if I am just start by rewriting this, so I'm going to get pi is less than theta, which is less than 3 pi halves. So they told me this, but I need to know where theta, theta over 2 is. So if I take theta and I divide it by 2, what do I have to do to the other two pieces? Divide it by 2. So basically, I just divide all this by 2, so that makes this 4. So my half angle is between pi halves and 3 pi fourths. And what quadrant is that? Second, pi halves to 3 pi. So it's not even all this, you know, it kind of even breaks down the second quadrant for you, but it's still all in the second quadrant. So I'm in the second quadrant. We're looking for tangent of that angle. And what's true about tangent in the second quadrant? It's negative. So I got to make sure that that actually happens. Okay. So now when I look at my half angle formulas for tangent, I have options, right? And I can actually avoid a square root, which is good news, right? So I would say if I were choosing these, I wouldn't choose the first one unless I had to for some reason. I definitely don't have to here. So I would either choose the second or the third. So which one do you want to choose? The third one? Okay, I'm not sure what I have. That, okay. I was, one, I was making sure they were in the same order on your paper as they are on here. They are. Okay. All right, so we'll do the third one. So again, I'm going to write it down so we're all on the same page. We've got, we have tangent of theta over 2 equals sine of theta over 1 plus cosine theta. So my guess is you like that one best because there was, it was positive, right? You didn't have to subtract. So that's good. Okay, so, and that's fine. Um, we have sine, 
We need sine, which they gave us, and then we need cosine, which they didn't give us, but we can find. So the cosine of theta from here is what? Negative 15 over 17, which you end up with a negative anyway, but it's okay. Like, it's all, it's all the same. All right, so when I substitute this in, then sine theta is negative 8 over 17 over 1 plus a negative 15 over 17. So my numerator still is negative 8 over 17. And then what's 1 plus a negative 15 over 17? This 1 plus negative 15 over 17. 2 over 17. So then I multiply by the reciprocal, so I get negative 8 over 17 times 17 over 2. The 17s cancel out, and negative 8 over 2 is what? Negative 4. So the tangent of theta over 2 equals negative 4. And we knew it was supposed to be negative. It took care of itself on this one, but again, if you'd use one of the ones with the square roots, you would have to know which way to go with it. Okay. We good? What questions do we have? All right. Let's look at number 7. Okay, so I've got cosine squared theta minus cosine two theta equals sine squared theta. So again, you gotta, you just gotta start somewhere and you gotta substitute something in and not break math rules. Like that's the, that's where, that's why most of y'all are getting stuck because you're, you're leaving off parentheses, you're doing stuff that you know is illegal. Um, think of it as, you know, could you do, like, for instance, if I got x plus five over five, can I cancel those fives out? No, so if I have sine of x plus cosine x over cosine x, I don't get to cancel those out either, right? Same thing. Think of it in, in terms of something that makes sense to you. And, you know, I mean, it's the exact same thing. They just have different, they just look different. Yeah, different values. All right. Um, so let me erase all that. Okay, so on number seven, I would say we're proving, so we want to work with the side that's more complicated. That's this one. I want it to look like this. So on the left-hand side, I do have something I could substitute for cosine squared, but I don't know that I want to um, at this point, because uh, I know I have to replace the cosine two theta. So let's just leave that cosine squared for a minute. So cosine squared theta, oh, that's theta, you want to go up there? Minus, all right, so cosine two theta. I got lots of options here. Which one do you think might be the most helpful? The first one, okay? So I'm subtracting something with more than one term. I have to have parentheses. Cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta, and that equals sine squared theta. So then cosine squared minus cosine squared, those zero out, and then I have minus a negative sine squared, so I get sine squared equals sine squared, and I'm done. We good? All right, let's look at number eight. So number eight, I would say the left-hand side is, is definitely the more complicated side. Plus, it's easier to get something out of the parentheses that are squared instead of getting something in, so I want this to be my goal. This is a plus b squared, okay? And I've said it before, your factoring flow chart is on page 15 of your ISN. I know we're not factoring here, but the rules are there, and if you go backwards, that's the multiplying. So you need to know what this is. This is going to give you cosine squared theta plus 2 cosine theta sine theta plus sine squared theta equals 1 plus sine 2 theta. Okay. All right. So on the left-hand side there, you've got, is there anything I can substitute? Yeah, I got cosine squared plus sine squared, and they're not attached to anything else. They're just there by themselves. That equals 1. So this is going to give me 1 plus 2 cosine theta sine theta equals 1 plus sine 2 theta. Now what can I substitute?
sine 2 theta. Yeah, this 2 cosine theta sine theta is the same as sine theta cosine theta. So this right here is just sine 2 theta straight off my reference chart. 1 plus sine 2 theta equals 1 plus sine 2 theta. And we are done. Sure is. They're the same value. 4 times 5 is the same as 5 times 4. Yeah? Okay. All right, so let's look at number 9. Um, I would definitely say we need to work with the right-hand side, so I'm going to rewrite my left-hand side. Tangent theta equals... Now, for... Um, Cosine 2 theta, I have some options. Sine 2 theta, I do not. So I want to put that one in first. Sine 2 theta is 2 sine theta cosine theta. Because then maybe that'll help me make my decision about what would be best in the numerator. Which again, that's a matter of opinion, but whatever, right? So um, it's going to be 1 minus something. 1 minus something that has more than one term. So there you go. And um, so what I know is that in the end, bless you. Tangent theta is what I want. And so tangent is sine over cosine. So I definitely want to introduce some sines here. And I don't need any cosines in the numerator. So I think I would choose the one that only has sine in it. Does that make sense? Like that would be my thought process there. So we get 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. Well, left is tangent theta. That equals. So the denominator is still 2 sine theta cosine theta. The numerator, 1 minus 1 zeroes out, and then minus a negative 2 sine squared is just 2 sine squared theta. So then the 2s cancel out. This sine cancels out with one of those. That leaves me with sine theta over cosine theta, which tells me that tangent theta equals tangent theta. Good. Okay. What questions do we have? Yes. No, you have to show that you substituted it in. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Well, one minus one zeroes out, right? And then you have minus a negative 2 sine squared, so that's going to be a positive 2 sine squared. It's really like 0 plus. I just didn't put that in there. Yeah, does that make sense? Oh. Kind of got it? Oh. Or, I could, or you could distribute the sine. So this could be 1 minus 1 plus 2 sine squared theta. Does that make sense? And then these zero out, so that's, you're just left with that part. Okay. Uh, that's, that's what happened there. Uh, We were multiplying what? Oh, I see what you're saying. Oh, I see what you're saying. So like this is one, okay. Yeah, but no, this is one minus this. So there's like another one here. That's the negative one you distribute, and then that's one, then that's the actual one that's there. Okay. All right, let's look at number 10. So I need, um, okay. Sine of 2 theta equals, so I'm going to work with the right-hand side. So sine 2, um, yeah, so sine 2 theta. Okay, we'll do the numerator first. So what I, well, what I would say here is that you, you know that tangent is sine over cosine. Can you substitute something for the denominator? Secant squared. Okay, so we're going to make this 2 times sine theta over cosine theta over secant squared theta, right? So secant squared, so sine of 2 theta equals 2 sine theta over cosine theta over 1 over what? Cosine squared theta. So then sine 2 theta equals... 2 sine theta over cosine theta times cosine squared theta 
over 1. So this cosine cancels out with one of those. So you have sine 2 theta equals 2 sine theta cosine theta. And then that means that sine 2 theta equals sine 2 theta. And we are done. Okay. What questions do you have? Practice. Practice is the only way you're going to get any better. You got to do the work. Come to math time. Come check your stuff. Come let me help you when you are stuck. But so many of you are struggling, and y'all are the ones that I don't see. So I don't know. I can't help you. Oh, whatever. Well, I don't see y'all before or after school either. Okay, one thing y'all are doing or not doing, listen, on your simplifying, you see all these equal signs I have everywhere? Look at that. So many of you, I wrote equal signs really big on your quiz because you don't have any anywhere. You just have random stuff that nobody can follow. And I tried hard to follow stuff, but I couldn't, and I'm not going to do that again. You have to have equality throughout. And plus, you can't go off to the side and like do something random and then go put it back in, especially if it's just like scattered everywhere and nobody can tell what's going on. You have to be able to, somebody else has to be able to follow it without any issues, okay?